Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Power Genius T610 battery charger. Inside the box we're getting the charger. It has a big 3.2 inch touch screen. In addition we're getting this 2 to 6S balance adapter, an XT60 adapter and also this adapter that allows you to power the charger. There are no instructions manual but it can be found online and I'm going to put a link to the instruction manual in the description of the video. On the back of the charger we have a 2.5 mm DC in jack and the walking voltage is between 10 to 30 volts. On the front we have the balance port, the main port which is an XT60 connector which you are going to plug the battery to and also this USB servo and temperature port so you can update the firmware using a USB adapter which is not included so you will have to prepare your own one. In addition the temperature adapter is not included as well. After powering on the charger for the first time you can see that everything is in Chinese so you will have to go to this setting over here you can see still everything is in English then press all the way here to change the language so in order to change the settings you will have to use this button so just hit plus and then everything is going to be in English just press home and now you can see everything is in English so as you can see we have five options the first one is the battery it allows us to select the battery that we want to charge you have in six options LiPo, LIHV, Life, PB, NICD and NIMH so it pretty much covers all the battery parameters that you're going to need to charge Hitting LiPo will enable you to do balance charge, charge, discharge or storage. When you press one of the options you can select the number of cells that you want to charge, current and TVCC which stands for termination voltage control cells which is basically the end voltage which means right now we are on storage so the end voltage will be 3.8.50 we can increase it or decrease it by 10 millivolts. You can see that when we charge, termination voltage per cell is 4.2 volts. Then when you're done, just hit the start. You can also select the memory. You have eight memory options, so you can just save it in an empty spot and then start it. Right now there is no battery connected, so it's not going to let me charge. So same goes for all the other charging options. They have similar menus. Settings is done using this tab over here. We can set the LCD backlight, touch sound. Let's turn it off because it's a little bit annoying. Buzzer, volume, complete ring. You can increase the time for between always, which means it's going to tell you that the charging process has finished until you're gonna come and disconnect the battery. And I think this is a much better option because you don't want to forget your batteries connecting to a charger. So I recommend to set it up on always. You can set it up also between one minute to 10 minutes. Next screen is the input voltage cutoff, which is useful, especially if you are powering this charger from an external battery. So you don't want to deplete the batteries. So if you're charging from a three cells like a battery, I would recommend to set it up to 10.5 volts. We have also temperature cutoffs, safety timer, which you can set between five minutes to 900 minutes. So after this amount of set time, the charger is going to cut off and it's going to turn off itself. The default value is off. You also have the capacity cutoff, which means after this amount of ampere hour will be charged to the battery, the charger is going to cut off and turn off as well. Next, we have cycle delay, fan control. It can be set to auto always the fan is going to be always on and I recommend to set it on auto. The balance control can be set to standard, accurate or fast. So if you set it to fast it's going to give you a less accurate balance control but the charging process is going to be a little bit faster. If you set it to accurate it's going to be more accurate but it's going to be slower and the default is standard. Max charging power can set between 120 watts all the way down to 50 watts. I'm going to leave it on 120. And we have also the constant voltage indicator cutoff that which is default set to 0.1 ampere, which means if the current charging state is going to be set to this amount of amperes, it's going to cut off itself after a designated time. Coming next is the load factory default is going to set it to the default values. And of course we have the language options which we changed before you can change it between chinese and english and that's it the next screen is the extra screen it allows you to use digital power 
you can set the maximum power output, the output voltage, the maximum current, and set a safety timer as well. Then start, and it's going to output the voltage of your choice through the main port. It's a very nice option, especially if you want to power other devices. So it gives you another nice feature. You can set the output voltage between three volts all the way up to 24 volts. In addition, we have the servo tester using this servo connector over here. And you have also this option to do a voltage calibration for your battery. Finally, we have a monitor option that once connected, of course, to a LiPo battery, it will give you all the information about the battery. We also have the input voltage it's connected to a 12 volt power supplier. You can see the battery volts. And once you press the cells, it measures the internal resistance. So it takes a few seconds to load. And then you can see the internal resistance of each cell and you can see the current voltage of each cell and it's accurate up to one millivolts, which is pretty impressive. It also shows you the voltage difference between the current cell and the cell that has the minimal voltage. By the way, pressing the balance option leads you to the same screen as the cells option. So I'm not sure why it is separated, but it leads to the same screen. I just started the charging process and I set the fan to always just to hear it. And the fan is pretty quiet, unlike my ISDT D2 charger, which gets quite noisy. For some it won't matter, but if you're looking for a quiet charger, this is a pretty good option. I just turn it back to auto, so now the fan is not working. On this screen, you can see the amount of time since you started charging the battery, the battery voltage, the battery internal resistance, which is going to be available only after a certain while, the current that the battery is being charged with, the capacity, which are the milliampere hour that the battery has been charged with, the target voltage, and pressing the data will tell you the input voltage, output voltage, internal temperature, external temperature if the sensor is connected, the fan status, and you can also see a graph, and pressing the cells will show you the same screen as the battery monitor. So you can see the current voltage per cell, the difference, and the internal resistance. So by the way, right now, after the data has been gathered, you can see the total battery internal resistance. Pressing stop will stop the charging process. You're not gonna be prompted or something like that. It's just going to be stopped. So overall, I think for $37, this charger well worth its price. It gives you many options, such as the digital DC power, which is a great add-on. And you can also prepare an adapter that will enable you to connect it to an XT60 LiPo battery or other connectors, and then you can charge smaller batteries on the field. It's pretty compact, and the touchscreen is also very pleasant to work with. You have to take into consideration that if you want to use it as your home charger, you will have to supply your own power supply. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this charger, feel free to ask it in the comment section below and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.